Okay, let's uh, let's bring it back in for the next part. Um, so Adam actually figured it out for us over the break, um, how to actually get it to merge before you export. And the solution that he found was that uh, the merge all faces that I was dropping in was in the wrong position, right? The merge all faces that I dropped in was uh, back here, and I tried to put two separate surfaces into it. But if you kind of look at the process here in Rhino, when we did the merge all faces, we first had to join those two faces. So um, what you have to do is what this configuration is showing here. Um, you have to first join the two faces together, which is what you're seeing in the solid union. Even though it still showed us the other lines, it's functioning exactly like it functions in Rhino. So first they have to be joined. Then you take that one joined surface that has a uh, facial, uh, what do you, I guess like a facial cut, um, and then merge faces. So if you want to just do the bake once and not have to worry about it on the Rhino side, then put uh, merge all faces at the end. Okay, but uh, let's let's move on here real quick, and I'm just gonna do that real fast on merge all faces. Yes, merge merge all faces, merge faces, something like that. So anyway, uh, effectively we are done essentially with uh, with the grasshopper component of this particular assignment. So our next step is to understand. Um, how we're going to export it. So, yes? What is a merge surfaces in Grasshopper? I just typed it in, but let's find out. Surface utility. Solid union is under intersect shape. Yes? Um, I don't know if you have to. Let's try it without it flattened. Yeah, I guess you do have to. So I'm looking at this thinking, oh, I know why. Let's drop a panel in and look at it. If it's not flattened, it reads it as two different sets. Mm -hmm. So it's only going to join surfaces that are in the same set okay. or in a single list. So that's why it has to be flattened, like so. OK. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so back into, back into Rhino here. Sorry. OK, so uh, what we're going to do now, right? So our process is to actually print this out and test it so that we can visually see what the um, thickness of these elements is going to be. And then we can make adjustments based on that, right? So we can go thinner if we find that it's really, really thick when we print it out. But we need to set up the size of the sheet that we're going to print. So you all have a certain number of dollars, I think. So if I ask us to print on, well, let's start, I don't want to do an 11 by 17. Let's just do an eight and a half by 11, actually. Okay, so eight and a half by 11 means that I need to, well, no, you've got enough credit. We're not gonna be printing anything. So let's just do 11 by 17, all right? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to basically draw a rectangle. Um, it doesn't matter what lay layer you put it on. 11 by 17? Yeah, it'll be kind of big. Uh, so that we can understand scaling. It, it doesn't matter if it's 11 by 17. Do you want to save the 15 cents? Save yes. the 15 cents. Do the 8.5 by 11. I'm going to do an 11 by 17. All right. So uh, you can click anywhere in space by doing a rectangle and then uh, say at and type in what the size of the sheet is going to be. So for me, it's going to be uh, 17 inches in the x direction because we're doing landscape format uh, by with a comma, 11 inches. And it looks like that. So we're going to have to scale this down so that it fits on that sheet. 
However, one of the things I want to be concerned about is that I actually am going to fold this thing. And if I do, have has Jeff shown you the make 2D yet? Yeah. So let me just, yeah, yeah. No, it should, yeah, it should be in the English system. Imperial. All right, so um, real quick, if I just show you a make 2D, you don't have to do this right now, but I just want to show you it. So this make 2D shows no, um, gives me no hint as to where I need to fold it. So for... The triangular fold, it's pretty obvious, right? I've got a very hard edge here, and then I've got a softer corner there. I can see it, but if I have it on a piece of paper, it might be hard to identify where this point is exactly. And over here, it's even softer. So I can't really tell what the, what the uh, uh, line is to fold, particularly over here. I can see it in Rhino, but um, I, can't, I, won't, I can't guarantee that I can see it very well on paper. So what I'm going to do instead is actually split this thing so that it actually will do a make 2D using the line of the fold. Okay, so I'm going to do a line. I'm going to start it here and end it there. And then I'm going to do another line from here to here. And the cool part about this is you can put it on a separate layer. Actually, it's already on two separate layers, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can put it on two separate layers. And then when you do your make 2D, um, turn on, uh, keep on maintain source layers. And then it should, if you hit OK, pull this down now. So everything else is white except I have my fold in red. And that's important because when we go to laser cut this, particularly when we go to laser cut it, we need to have that line there so that it will cut a little mini score line so it makes the fold very easy. It's even more important that the fold be easy when you're doing something like this that has a very fragile frame, because if you look over at the, the example model, those ones that they tried to fold that were very, very skinny, you know, got kind of messed up in that area. So um, then the next part, uh, do you guys need a moment before I move on? Okay. All right. So I'll pause and we'll get to this point and then we'll do the resizing. <clears throat> So down here, everyone, down here, I have my 11 by 17 sheet, except for Nafi, she is an 8.5 by 11. So um, the, the sheet is obviously much, much, much smaller than the volume itself, right? So we're going to have to do a couple of different types of scale, right? So you can scale by an overall percentage, right? So an overall percentage... Um, would mean, you know, if I, like I was saying with uh, this thing, right, if I reduce the size by 10%, then a 10-inch ruler is now only a 9-inch ruler. Um, so that is a, s a simple scale, but it's not an architectural scale, right? So a lot of the types of scales that we work in is something like quarter-inch equals a foot or eighth-inch equals a foot, which means that... <clears throat> You have to scale down, obviously, to a measure of feet as a singular unit, and then by inches. So the, the fast way that I kind of ballpark these things in my head is just like I did with the calculator in the last video or two. I divide by 12, and then I divide by uh, the, the fractional percentage of whatever scale I want to be in. So if I need to do quarter inch equals a foot, I could divide by 12 and then divide by four, uh, or I think you could just divide by 48, I think. So um, if I select this and I'm gonna make a copy so I don't screw it up. So copy, I'm gonna put it over there. 
I can go here and say uh, scale, and I pick a base point, so something like this, and I can say 1 slash 48. And it scales it down. Makes it really, really tiny. So now I can bring it next to my sheet. It looks like it's going to fit. I guessed correctly. Well, because I already did the math, so I knew it was going to fit. But um, You might have to do it a couple of times to figure it out. If you wanted to do something like eighth inch equals a foot, then you would do, uh, I guess it would be 1 by 96. 1 over 96, something like that. That would be eighth inch equals a foot. Okay, so, um, but if you don't, if you don't feel like doing the extra in your head math to just give you one division, the easy way is to remember divide by feet, which is basically divide by 12, and then you're going to divide it by whatever your fraction is. So one over four or something like that. So it's, it's very, very simple. So if I wanted to do eighth inch equals a foot scale, then I divide by 12 and then divide by eight. If I want to do half inch, divide by 12, divide by two. Is that making sense to you guys? Okay. So um, now I've got it basically um, the same size as the sheet. I just need to move it on like this. And now I'm ready to print. Top view. Go down and look at it like this. Um, and so just to complete the thought here before, you know, and just make it really easy on you guys. Printing out of Rhino is very, very simple, um, but it's also not very clever. Like, it can't do very many things in terms of formatting and all this other stuff. It can do, like, your typical formatting stuff, but don't... We, yes? I meant it was just going to be... Let's address it individually. Let's address it individually, then. Okay, but basically you take... Let me finish the thought, and then I'll go back and I'll recap on it for you guys. Okay. So uh, the print function is basically you just go to File, Print, and it's going to give you a bunch of stuff here, but don't worry too much about it. You're going to change, if you're doing 11 by 17, you change from letter to, there is no 11 by 17. Cool. Oh, because I'm on the wrong printer. Switch to the 11 by 17 printer, and there's the 11 by 17 setting. Funny. Um, and the, the, the only thing that you really need to be concerned with is setting your print window. And so for me, uh, you go to view and output scale, and then you go to window, and you set from this point. Oh, look at that. Went the wrong way. Set. From this point, hold on, am I in the wrong orientation? Oh yeah, landscape, there we go. Window, and then go from here to, Oh, it's giving me boundaries. All right, that'll be fine though. Then hit enter, and the, so you've got, set it to 11 by 17, set it to window, and then for your scale, always leave your scale one to one. All right, so then you basically just, oh, that, it's all white. Let me change that. The layer 5, I'll change to black. Uh, file, print, 11 by 17, landscape, window, here to there, enter, and then 1 to 1. Why is it still showing up? Ah, There we go. All right, now, print, 11 by 17, landscape, uh, window. window, even though my window is already set, but I'll do it again. Set, just to be sure. Then I go down to uh, 1 to 1. That's it. So now you've heard it three times, so I expect you to remember it. Then you go to print, uh, it'll do that, and it'll send it off. And if you haven't printed here yet, you're going to get this little thing down here that tells you it's sent to print and it... Oh, I should tell you like how much money is left or something like that. But don't worry, I'm pretty sure that on, at least on my end, I think this is going to be like one of the only things we actually have to print. 
Okay? Questions? Except for scale. Okay. You have $20? How do you have $20 on your account? I don't know.